All right, guys, as promised, we are starting off Insider. And in our very first series, we have Arun Stockguru. Calls himself as a rebel in the market since the age of 15. It's been over 12, 13 years of experience. He writes in a blog, which is over 10 years old now, millions of followers for his unique views and ideas about micro caps. Over 30k followers in his Twitter handle. I'm quite honored, happy that our first guest for Insider is Arun. It's going to be a very impromptu kind of a talk where we hear it from him how one can approach his own trading style, his trading approach in the field of finance and financial markets. And I have a good news. With me and Arun, we are joined by Soumya, his partner, Arun's partner, and a brilliant mind. He's finished his master's in economics from London School of Economics. Um, a rebel in his own way, uh, a very good stock picker as well. So double the fun, we have two great guests who will guide us about financial markets. Arun, Soumya, thank you Good and welcome. Thank you, yeah. thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. So I'll kickstart with what just happened a couple of days back mm -hmm. with you all. That is your first international workshop right. in Dubai. Right. Tell us something about it. Uh, how did it happen? How was the crowd? And uh, where do you take it from here? Yeah. So basically like we were conducting workshops for the past one year or so. I mean till date we have had maybe 20 to 22 workshops as on day. I mean we did cover you know the whole part of the country and we thought of going in the, we thought of rather repeating it in the outside world and that's how Dubai came. I mean there are a lot of guys you know who have seen us growing over the last 8-10 years and they almost compelled us rather forced us to be in that country. Yeah, so it was a wonderful experience. We had uh, had two sessions there. We yeah. expected one, had two. So it was double bonanza. Uh, the CA Institute in Dubai did invite us for a workshop there. And the good news is that they want us to come every quarter now mm -hmm. and conduct a workshop there. Uh, next is Singapore. We are planning it. And hopefully in the first three months of next year, we should pull it. Right. But not only Singapore, the, the unique thing is like you know we have been invited to host our workshop in a city or a port called Bandar Abbas. You know, we don't even know where that country or even city belongs to. I mean we recently did a Google app and it belongs to Iran, you know. I mean Bandar Abbas happens to be a port in Iran. So people are actually inviting us from that country, you know, to, to go there and conduct what we've been doing this for the last say, two years or three years. That's great. That's great. Okay, now uh, with my second question, mm -hmm. I'll move back uh, way back in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to know uh, how was, how did all it all happen for Soumya uh, when you were very young? Uh, what what is your earliest right. memory of you getting exposed to anything about financial markets? Right. It goes back a long, you know, it's a bit of an accident or a coincidence, you know, you can put it in any way. Uh, I was probably in class 7 or class 8 and in our part of the world, since I basically help from a village called Hooghly, you know, it's it would be around 100 kilometers from the outskirts of Bengal or proper Calcutta. So, in our part of the world, the parents aspire their, you know, children to speak in fluent English. I mean, come on, think about it. A guy of like 13 and 14, he would be roaming around building castles in the year, right? So my dad actually told me that you got to speak in proper English and, and for that sake, you know, you, you would always have the pink paper that is like gone and tense always. And I was always, you know, seated beside him, reading those papers, glancing, uh, glancing around. Obviously the interest was in something else, you know. But again, he told me that, son, you got to speak in English. One day it so happened, he wasn't moving, you know, he was constantly looking at me and I was forced to, you know, glance through the paper from front to last. And coincidentally, I came across some, you know, cumbersome sheets, which later I was told that these are like, you know, stock speaks and the rates of company shares and all. I asked about it, I asked about it, I asked him what these are all about. Say, son, no matter what you do in life, but don't even dare to touch this. I thought, this should, this is my stuff. That's why he called himself whatever. What about you, Samir? So my grandfather used to invest a lot in stocks and so I 
I used to ask him how do you pick stocks and he used to tell me that you know 25% growth has to be there. Uh, there's company like Asian Paints when they launch a product you see it on TV and then you try and understand what kind of market it can have. So that way I got exposed to it and then I had an inclination towards finance and business. So stock market is the only place where businesses and finance both combine. So uh, yeah, landed up in stock market. So we see completely different backgrounds, right? Right, absolutely. But then you are sitting next to each other. Correct. That's, that's what financial market does to us. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, let's take a couple of years ahead. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the teens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the thirteens till the nineteens. Mm -hmm. What was the Arun thinking, doing? Uh, I, I became crazy, you know, because at, at that point of time, internet was very expensive. You know, it was it used to cost like around 70 rupees an hour. That being part of Hooghly, where communication and network itself would be a taboo, you know. So, I mean, I, I started reading those, you know, pink papers much dedicatedly. I was, I was, I was having, you know, uh, complete admirations towards the subject. Uh, started approaching the cyber cafes of the world. You know, in, in our part, I mean, the cyber cafes were pretty minimal, hardly they were like one or two. So started banking schools, you know, kept on moving to cyber cafes, you know, started glancing through all these things and uh, I was told there is a site called Investopedia, which really, really helped me in my initial course. So it was like, I was lacking money, right? In those days, I mean, I used to hardly get like one rupee a day. So I was actually, I mean, connecting the net and would be disconnecting after some seconds to read all those things, you know, because I was lacking money, right? And in that way, my initial journey started. What about you, Sam? So, uh, for me, my first stop was Nestle, which I picked up because, you know, there are a lot of medicine stores around my house and I uh, went down and I was looking. So, my uh, the person who worked in our office had a baby and my aunt also had a baby and they both were using the same baby food. Mm -hmm. So, from the things that I learned from my grandfather, he I just told him that, you know, this looks like something that is, uh, you know, nobody would compromise on. So, uh, let me buy just one or two shares of this. Please buy it for me and that's how it started. So, this 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 uh, this thought came to you when you were in your teens? I was in class 8 or 9. I was in 8 or 9. And uh, thanks to definitely the teachings of grandfather and all, he always used to tell me, look at the products and would they hokey, what are they launching, how good it is. Right. So I thought if both the people, you know, somebody who is very well to do and somebody who probably cannot afford and uh, trying very hard to, you know, buy those things for his child. So I thought, okay, this is something that, you know, people will need always. Why not buy it? I had no idea about valuations, price and those kind of things. I just right. wanted to buy one share. Please buy it for me. And that is something that he gifted me. That's a very good gift. Right. In fact, Nestle and IBC are the two examples which I uh, take often mm -hmm. when I especially go and uh, speak in front of, right. of youngsters. Mm -hmm. So, especially the MBA colleges and all. So, uh, IBC, I take a, a view that if you're a smoker, mm -hmm. you've been smoking. Mm -hmm. And you realize the fact that, okay, I'm into the chain mode and probably the next 10 years or 20 years, you will smoke. Please get yourself few shares of IBC. Right. And maybe 40 sort of Apollo hospitals or something like that. And uh, yes, when you have, when, when you're expecting a baby mm -hmm. or something, definitely get into Nestle. You know, because uh, all the baby, baby products. Absolutely. So, great. Let's take few more steps ahead. Mm -hmm. um, let's come to 2016, December, where we are sitting right now. Mm -hmm. um, we all realize the fact that you have created value. Uh, not only for yourself, but for others also. Mm -hmm. They look up to you. They they look up to you for your advice, for your guidance, for your mentorship, right? Uh, but obviously, when you both started, uh, it was very naive. It was you didn't right. you couldn't see it clearly, right? The dots, as uh, Steve Jobs had said, mm -hmm. the dots in our life gets connected ahead. You just can't join the dots right now. Mm -hmm. It falls in place. Mm -hmm. So when did you realize you, you started from a very different part of the world than Shomya and obviously the dots are joined. Mm -hmm. But during the process, there was some day, some moment when you realize, hold it, mm -hmm. what is my passion and what I am doing? 
has created a little value for myself and maybe for others. Mm -hmm. And this can be the next five years of my life and that five can extend to another 10 and 50. Mm -hmm. so when did you realize in your life that, okay, I think I can have, I, you know, I can call myself a stock you know, or <laughs> See, just to clarify, like, I mean, this stock guru tag is pretty controversial. It's actually, I mean, when I was thinking of, you know, initiating a blog, I was actually looking for a catchy name. In the year of 2006, I mean, I watched a movie called Partner, you know, and Salman Khan actually played the protagonist. So he had that love guru tag, you know, and I thought like, okay, this love guru tag, you know, I mean, seems pretty catchy. So if you can actually put my name in front and this, you know, guru tag behind, it, it makes a pretty controversial catchy tag. Either people are going to say, okay, so we have got a guru now, you know, maybe they can play the sarcastic role. But again, these things should be, you know, embedded in their mind. So that actually paved the way for my stock guru thing. I am not a stock guru in any means. We all are like students of the game. Uh -huh. I've been putting like 10 to 12 man hours a day over the last 12, 13 years or so. I'm learning. Nobody can be a master in stock markets. It's an unending sea. You know, you evolve always. I've been evolving. I probably have got much more blunders than my success stories. But it's from the failures that you learn. I have learned nothing from my successes. Though fortunate to make some money, probably would be mid fortunate to make much more, you know, right. when I grow older. But since in markets, you know, we are still young, I believe, like I'm 28, he's 26, and we lack an expiry, right? It's not a cricket field or a football field that after 35, you know, you would obviously you would be forced to take a retirement, right? In our part of the world or in our business or in our markets, there is no expiry. In fact, Mr. Buffett, who obviously happens to be the third richest man in the world, the greatest investor of all times, is 85 nearly and people would be paying him you know 15 crores just to have a lunch with him so that thing gives us the kick right exactly exactly but then please going back to my question a bit like when did you realize Kine, i have to i am on the right path you know when when we are young we are kind of lost uh, we listen to others elders do this do 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 that then we soon realize this is not me and that's happened most of the time and probably we are the very few lucky ones who are actually walking our passion mm -hmm. so what 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 i'm trying to get is when did you realize was me i am on the right path and this path is you know can take me a long way or i can add value to others mm -hmm. so when did you realize this probably the time when i started writing blogs because at that point of a time india was amid of a crazy bull market you know everything was moving to the northwards trajectory big big time i mean so the likes of unix inu take which was quoting at 300 bucks in the year of 2013 went to 42000 in the year of 2007 so a huge amount of wealth creation right and i started thinking guys like this is genuine wealth creation right in in our I mean, our parents, they are habituated in putting their savings to FDs and FDs would always give an interest rate of 8%, right? Inflation would be a bit higher probably. I'm talking about core inflation. So that cancels each other, right? So your actual savings is none. So if you are to generate real good money, you are only left with stocks. And fortunately or unfortunately in India itself, stocks ain't considered as an asset till date. So I thought like if by means of stock ownership, if I can make some money, and actually can help others in knowing their nitty gritties of stock market you know it would be i mean it would be beneficial to everyone right not only i would be learning but i would be sharing my stuff through my readers through the blog itself and they incidentally would also be in a position to learn and learn simultaneously yeah in terms of say uh, coming back to the first question workshops and all uh, it was a very random thing that we started doing so we were actually uh, you know just sitting in a place and having chilling and suddenly what happened we thought that okay listen we have attended me and our other partner uh, not Arun so we attended a lot of sessions so wherever we could think that we'll get knowledge when we started we went there and we thought that it was very theoretical and we did not get what we wanted to hear what we wanted to know mm -hmm. uh, so we thought that you know let us create something that we want right. now that we are in a position that we have actually put in so much effort to learn those things mm -hmm. probably let us design something and uh, in our first workshop honestly we did not even have a presentation or something it was everything was from heart there right. were barely 20 people there and the people liked it a lot and uh, from there uh, you know we just started it and we thought there was no okay, stopping there was no stopping actually so extending this there is no stopping mm -hmm. 
uh, what's in line? How's your what's your team like? Or what's the structure? What's the plan of action? What is the mission vision? Or uh, is it is is Arun still likes to be a little lost like he was when he was let's say? So I was yeah. I mean, I was always a moron, probably a lunatic. I still am, and I would continue to be one. You know, Indian Duke was also. See the, the the I mean the feeling of ownership. You know, it, it's giving me goosebumps even as of now. I mean the feeling of ownership, and as I've said, I've been fortunate to make some money. You know, and uh, I mean I've learned through the hard way. I, as I said, I have not got lot of blunders, and I'm really fortunate to see the real world. See, a lot of guys would be just putting up a screener, and they would be seeing the annual report, and that's done. The analysis part done. But in my life till date. You know, from the first meeting of Ren Kelsani, which I did probably when I was like 17 or 18, and the last meeting was of a company called Kisan Holdings. In between, like I have had a meetings with 215 companies. That's quite a lot, right? So, when meeting these companies, knowing about their arena, getting the industry perspective first hand, these things are never going to be put in public domain, right? So, you get that edge. Also, there would be a lot of guys, you know, like-minded folks whom I'm pretty well like acquainted with. These guys tend to add a lot of value too. So when we actually connect the dots, the cumulative wisdom would help you to generate that alpha that you were like always seeking for. What about plan of action for the team ahead? So basically, as uh, you did rightly say that we did our first international workshop, so the workshop should, should continue. But the next thing that we are targeting in terms of personal satisfaction is we are targeting reaching out to few colleges and doing a personal finance thing there just for our own satisfaction because see no matter whether you are a doctor, engineer or a CA, you need to understand and manage your own finances. Correct. Right. So that is something that is there on our mind. Uh, now we are also getting a lot into preferentials, mm -hmm. so preferential shares because what happens is in terms of small cap, it's very difficult to get the desired volumes that you need. Uh, right. So we are getting into preferentials, connecting company and the uh, investors uh, so that you know preferentials become successful and even now we are planning to get a savvy uh, registration. So that's what you happens, you know, when you start to make a lot of money, when you have like learn the process you know in the hardest way possible obviously the money thing comes the money flow comes right and in stock markets probably compounding happens to be the eighth wonder of the world right i mean in that in that I aspect, sense, right. right if you are actually like looking to compound at 20 percent your money explodes by 10x in a matter of 10 years that is pretty huge right obviously if you put a like a peer comparison with the fd it would hardly be a bit more than double probably more than i mean that cancels by a huge way right I mean, the everything blows up miserably, and the equity part. And not to forget, these are in India long term capital gains are still tax free, whereas FDs are not, right? Yeah. They are still like tax at thirty percent or. So even if you make like a million from nothing, you you got to keep the money, and even dividends are still tax free. Obviously, there's a limit now, ten lakhs. But in Indian household, Indian retailers would never be getting a dividend check of ten lakhs, right? Exactly. Yeah. So you know, we 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 are talking in a. We, our, our talks are in a juncture where we're talking about how important risk is. Right. You know, uh, Arun and myself, we, we come from very media per Bengali families. Right? Right. And uh, we've been told or we understood that stock market is a gamble. Right. Okay, a risk is not a good thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, safe. Play, play it very safe. Correct. Study, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Get a good job. A good job is which is a safe job. Mm -hmm. Okay, that okay. Mera life to safe. set hai, right? So, uh, what we are trying to say is taking risk is very really important. Okay. Um, so let me ask you: mm. Do we, do you you've been into the markets for a certain number of years? Mm. Uh, do you think that stock market participation mm. is a gamble? Absolutely not. Because again, see, we have got an exploding population, right? We are on the threshold of hitting like 130 crores. That is huge, right? And look at the stock market penetration. Not even 2 crore DMAT accounts are there. And out of that 2 crore DMAT accounts, 40 lakh DMAT accounts are freezed owing to a lack of PAN card. That is pathetic, right? I mean, not even like 1.2%. In the developed economies, it happens to be what, like 10% and 15%. So. Guys like us or our friends or our cohorts or acquaintances, these guys are not inclined to put their money in FDs. They want higher superior returns, right? 
So obviously these days what we are seeing is a lot of our friends, you know, they are asking ourselves to put their money in stocks. Obviously this would take time, but after a matter of say 5-10 years, the whole of Indian populations would be pretty inclined to stock markets. The other thing is, see, in the short term, obviously equities is risky and debt is safer. But in the long run, if you adjust inflation, debt is a bomb which will explode, uh, explode and uh, or FD, whatever, fixed income, mm -hmm. I mean. But equities, if you see the long term, then it does really well. And the, uh, and the place where, say, it becomes risky is when you try and compare your returns to others or you know when you pick up a phone call and your friend says or broker says buy this and you go and buy that even if you stick to the basics that okay i use the, these products i've been using these products let me just read a little bit about them know a little bit about them and then invest being a retailer and uh, you can do very very well for yourself any any of those consumption stories be it a maruti or a colgate i've really? done very 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 good given very good returns even in terms of what the worst part is that people will be working in a bank probably seeing what is happening there and trying to invest in an oil company or uh, you know uh, there's a person who uh, was very close to pharmaceutical industry and we had a very big pharma bull run now so he was his own company was growing very well but he never invested in pharma so not keeping your eyes open is where the risk is if you keep your eyes open you know what you are doing obviously the risk element is there but then uh, that's business right when the probability becomes 75 80 the risk becomes business otherwise it's speculation so yeah, just to add to my two cents the problem is people would actually relate intraday trading or gambling with investments right say out of these two crores probably 90 percent of those would be gamblers or traders they would be buying something today xyz with the hope of you know making a multiple returns till 330 that is insane right you got to enjoy the ownership these managements these promoters they are working from like dawn to dusk they would be putting like 13 14 15 hours a day with so much of assets you open your computer just put a click through your broking medium bang you are the owner right it's so easy i mean if they can't even afford that or if can't even do that they should leave stock markets immediately. Right. In fact, I uh, I take the example of uh, good wine. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the the older the wine is, the, the better it becomes. Right. So uh, the same same thing I say that if you have a short term time frame, put in empty and sit sit quiet. But then you know, the equity actually becomes really good if you give it more time. Right. The, the more time you give, the more times it becomes. So. Uh, People need to understand the basic difference between trading, investing, mm -hmm. and like Mr. Buffy at times says that if I like the company so much that my will be I will ne never even sell it. I might probably accumulate more at lower levels. No, biggest example has been Piddy Light. Everyone has used. If the carpenter gets anything different, you will say, "Why? Ye kya le aaya? Leke ja. Piddy, matlab Fabricol hi leke Such a big brand name." 10 years back, 20 years back, when our parents were probably in their teens, then also Fevicol ka jore tute ka nahi was there. Amazing products, MCL and Fevicwig, uh, Fevicstick, all those kind of products. And uh, look at it, where it is, very good management, everything was so good for the company. And uh, if you ask anyone, tell me one competitor of Pity Light, Coke ka Pepsi hai, Colgate close-up is there, tell me one competitor, I think hardly anyone would be able to tell. So don't you want to own that kind of a business? If you want to own that kind of business and you don't have that kind of money, just buy a little bit of shares and keep it. Don't look at market cycles, don't look at macros. How We don't even know what is happening in our household completely. How do we know what is happening in China? It's ridiculous, right? So uh, rather than thinking about that, it's better we think about stocks and hold them. And just to clarify post this interview, people may actually ridicule us, yaar, ye hindsight hai, right? Koi bhi bol sakta hai. But again, a lot of our parents, like my dad happens to be a diabetic. So why not like buy the Zydus wellness thing, right? I mean, thus saal pehle, that wellness thing would have cost like hardly 70 rupees per share. It's now nearly at 1100. So even if someone is a diabetic and he just buy few shares of this guy's oh. wellness, probably his son would inherit a lot of wealth thanks to his dad, thanks to his diabetic dad, right? So not only he would be a consumer, he would be like a satisfied shareholder too. In our workshop, what we often say or term is, you know, satisfied set of consumers often leads to prosperous set of shareholders. Right, right. Very well put actually. Uh, 
what I get a sense of is uh, your investing style mm -hmm. uh, is is a lot to do with uh, qualitative, a lot to do with right. intangible things. Right. It's a common sense investing. Okay. Right. Say, if it's a heavy call subject, right? Isn't it obvious that heavy call banana con? Right. Is there a competitor? Hai? Okay, I don't see any competitor. Okay, looks good. Okay, what's the share price? I should be a part owner of this for the next ten years. They can't say what. Fine, right? Um, but apart from this very qualitative, common sense investing style, mm -hmm. are there any typical parameters which you as a team look for in a company because there can be thousands of companies right. to filter them you it's very difficult to meet obviously mm -hmm. every one of them but be some first level second level of filtering mm -hmm. and those filtering has to be on some kind of quantitative it cannot be purely qualitative so I'm not sure all our you know we, we, people would love to know that is there any first level second tier of uh, filtering that you do to but it's okay, 10, 10 stocks I have, now let's meet them and Right. Yeah, I mean I got your question. See to make things or to make life easier for those guys, you know, it's like common sense itself is pretty uncommon in markets, right? I mean we know everything yet, you know, we would be lacking the silliest of part. Say it, it, it has like happened a nomenclature of times when someone who would be like working in HDFC bank would give me a call and say, Arun, can I buy shares of SBI? I mean, that is as crap as it can get, right? He is the guy who is managing the CASA accounts for the last 7-8 years and he gives me a call and to, just to inquire whether he can actually buy a bank which is far, far lesser efficient than to his own bank, right? I mean, this is the misery that these guys tend to face. Obviously, they would be squandering their wealth and the stock market should be there to blame. The problem is in stock markets, you would be committing blunders and you would blame stock markets. That's not the same, same thing to do, right? Coming back to your question, see, there are a lot of patterns, a lot of things. I mean, we also go by the conventional age-old approach, you know, the P's, the ROE's, the ROC's, the incremental ones, the interest covers, the dividend yields, the network, the promoter shareholding pattern, what has been put in the annual letter, everything. Obviously, because we want a good sleep in our night, right? I can't actually, I personally can't sacrifice my sleep because I take great pride in company's ownership. So to me is, I can actually, out, I should actually be in a position to challenge the company's MD or the owner by knowing all such things, right? right. And in that way, your thesis get built, your conviction gets higher and eventually, obviously that market would realize that probably you were right. Market would eventually rate the stocks and you would make a lot of money, right? So, to, to answer it in short, we would be looking at the return on equities or the return on capital employed. But mostly, what I personally do is, I have got my personal pattern, say, just to give a perspective. There is a company called Everity Industries, right? I mean, the Khaitans. So, it so happened that there was a good company and uh, it was mismanaged. You know, the, the, the senior Khaitan had a laid back approach, you know, he was managing it just like any other PSUs. But Everity was available in like 32 million outlets, I'm sorry, 3.2 million outlets, like 32 lakh outlets. That's quite huge, right? So he had that ready made distributor and chain and supply chain setup. Everready also is a good brand, right? So Everready was a brand. Everready had that supply chain and distributor and bridge. Everready had everything, but the only thing which was lacking is efficiency. It was thoroughly mismanaged. Come Samri Tanshu Khaitan, the junior Khaitan, after completing his studies, joins the company, revolution is his. Make it, makes it efficient, the company moves from 15 to 400. So what I do is, I tend to go for legacy companies which have been there in the business for 40, 50 years and something unique is happening, There, some transformation is happening. So once I get that thing, one can make a lot of money. So you wait for the tipping point. Mm -hmm. Everything is said but someone, you, the, the, the bullet is ready. But See, just, just, right, just to give you a perspective, I mean, I have had the uh, fortune to Mint say nine times in the last two years on a company called Kingfa Science. The story was very simple. See, there is a company which started in China in the year of 1993. They started from zero or scratch. So, from 1993 to 2003, they did a compounding net profit growth of 65% CAGR. That was massive, right? I mean, a 65% CAGR result from nothing to some $2 billion north. So a company which has grew like 65% in China was looking to acquire some companies in India whereas China's market started to get like saturated. 
So once China thing got saturated, obviously the company, he will be looking for some other global presence, right? Comes India, which was again a virgin market. So Kingfa China acquires an Indian company called Hydro SS in Pune. They acquired the company at 41 bucks when the prevailing market price was 13. I mean, that speaks about confidence, right? My company is quoting at 13 and some outsider comes and buys my company at 41. So I was presuming that this company has been such a gigantic wealth creator in China. If they can replicate even, you know, uh, say a decimal or even one tenth of what it could do in China, in India, that would offer obviously propel the Indian entity in a different trajectory, right? That's what happened. And from that 13 rupee thing, Kingfar today quotes at around 1000 bucks. So it's huge, right? From 13 to 1000 rupees in a matter of two years. We are talking about like this sort of wealth creation markets. You just need to keep your ears and eyes, you know, eyes open. Eyes open. So the first time when he was talking about Kingfar to me, uh, he just told me that, listen, this company, the China company did 65% CAGR for 22 years. And that was it. That was it. You don't need more research exactly. for that. So sometimes you do get those kind of full tosses. But definitely to get those full tosses, you have to work very hard. You need to study a lot. You need to study. I have got a habit of studying 8 to 10 hours a day. And I've been doing it for the last 10 12 years. I don't seek for stocks. I would be studying randomly and inadvertently the stock would come. See, uh, just to give you an example of jute based stocks, you know, I was actually reading some random Bangladesh paper called Prothom Alu. And I, I, I got through some amazing articles regarding the jute thing. Now, jute stocks were on the cusp of moving in the northward, you know, trajectory. So, I, I started the, you know, jute stocks and saw there are some like patterns, you know, which helped me to build my thesis. So, did some scuttlebutt, went through the management, you know, went through the annual report, build up my conviction, got them and was fortunate again to make some money. Obviously, you know, the, the hard work always pays off. The, the, the good thing and the bad thing is people only see the the hits. People only see the, how much Arun has built a multi packer Exactly. This but is they the don't thing. see the fact that Arun probably is still reading 8 to 10 hours every day. And, you know, people try to ask me and I say that, you know, uh, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Right? So, you, you don't, uh, you know, a lot of people also ask me, uh, do you need luck uh, to have success in the financial markets? So uh, my answer is, you forget luck. You don't even uh, think that there's something called luck that exists. You just focus on the work. Mm -hmm. And if you keep focusing on the work, the luckier you will get. So it has worked for me. What about you? If, if someone asks you that, do I need luck for uh, financial market success? What would you say? You tend to be luckier if you are like hardworking, you know. If you are really diligent, then at some point of a time, luck would follow suit. Because again, I mean, see, luck thing is given, but again, you need to have that tenacity to work harder, right? To, to get through all these financial details, you know, of meeting maybe like-minded fellows, you know. And today, we are amidst of a global village, right? Everything is so aligned. Everyone is a journalist, thanks to Twitter. We all are presently in like Facebooks. LinkedIn actually helps in connecting the peers. We have got YouTube. So there's everything. You just need to open up your iPad or computer or even a mobile phone, your smart mobile phone, which and may cost like 3,000 bucks, right? So you, take, you just need to open those, lunch through all this. Bang, who knows, maybe you are in cups of an amazing st stock pick. And uh, from luck, I can only give you an example of Chinese bamboo tree. Mm -hmm. So which does not grow for From a like lot of years, years and yeah. suddenly it grows and people say that, okay, this is luck. But it takes a lot of things that happen for those many years, which suddenly start reflecting. So um, yeah. there's a thin line, right, between luck and fluke. And, yeah. the, and the idea is that, you know, people have this perception that market is probably a, a place where you need to have some extra information or you know you, yes, need, yes. you need that khabar or uh -huh. something like that in, in in fact a lot of my friends who have done chartered accountancy or cfa and all even after reading all those things uh, what happens books make you very theoretical so they believe in efficient market thesis and all which which are not actually prevalent especially in a country like india which is growing so fast and there are so many factors aligned so more important is changing the perception, right. knowing that it's not the luck or a khabar or something like that, you know, it depends on you. Listening to everyone's conversations because that is where you make money, big themes come from there. So say in, uh, I think uh, when the IT boom was happening, when I talked to my elders and talked to 
सीनियर इन्वेस्टर्स सो एवरीबडी वॉज टॉकिंग अब तो कंप्यूटर का जमाना है नो बडी वॉज लुकिंग इन टू अपॉर्चुनिटीज दैट इज द सेकेंड लेवल ऑफ थिंकिंग एवरीबडी देन स्टार्ट टॉकिंग की ओके ना यू नो दैज अ रियल एस्टेट बूम रोटी कपड़ा मकान विल ऑलवेज वर्क इन इंडिया फार्मास्यूटिकल एवरी मदर यूज टू से ऐसे बैठता है तू ऐसे करता है पीपल स्टार्टेड स्मोकिंग स्मोकिंग स्टार्टेड टू बिकम यू नो इट्स अ नॉर्मल सोशल नॉर्म नाउ सो पीपल वर स्मोकिंग ड्रिंकिंग एंड एवरी थिंग एंड नो बडी थॉट हाउ कैन आई मेक मनी फ्रॉम दिस पीपल वे यूजिंग हैवल्स नो बडी थॉट सो इन टर्म्स ऑफ रिटेल इन्वेस्टर्स इफ वी कैन जस्ट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम देर Mm. for the listeners if you can start from there just keep your eyes and ears open uh, even in terms of say united spirits yes, yes. a brilliant example right because yes. you yourself nobody in your family has ever you know taken alcohol and you are going to parties and taking it every day right. and not thinking you know can i own this business and this is a lot easier said than done but this is the starting point and this thing will give you much more confidence to hold a lot of people we talk to yeah i bought the share at 100 i sold at 120 aaj 400 rupees that doesn't give you any credit because honestly uh, that extra bit of work that luck that you call is the 280 rupees that you lost mm-hmm. right right you need to work that little extra to be that little lucky to get that 280 extra or money yes. on per share now you know we 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 we're talking about uh, shares and companies ownership that we should get into ourselves mm-hmm. look into products that you use and if i see mm-hmm. something wait a second i'm using this thing for over a year now mm-hmm. and i think i'll be using this for very many years mm-hmm. so why not just look back which is the company name of the company is it listed or how can i be a part of this right. product i think that's a pretty good way to start right. now uh, if that's a pretty good way to start mm-hmm. and we put in our hard work and yeah. If you work hard, probably luck will also come our way, mm-hmm. and thanks to Arun, we might get into some multi baggers also. Mm-hmm. But how does Arun pull the plug and exit a multi bagger? You say nine times, you say let's say thirteen times or five times. A recent pick of yours, uh, where you were seeking his blessing, I think it it, it went five times. <laughs> right? Okay. So okay. so. So is it going to be five times? Is it going to be fifteen times? Is it going to be nine and a half times? How do you? How do you decide? Uh, you know, when you're entering, it's more qualitative, subjective, mm-hmm. common sense. But the damn thing is moving fast. It's going your way. Whatever uh, you anticipated, it's playing off. When do you, uh, you know, convert your Excel sheet profits to actual money? Right. When to sell? Right. Yeah, that question. is the biggest question. But again, <laughs> see, after like you know zeroing on the company, after buying shares, after looking at the ROEs and ROCs and other quantitative as well as <coughs> qualitative aspects, after contenting myself with these cattle words, after meeting the managements, after doing a proper thesis for over a month, I personally would be inclined to put my money on the company. So once I bought the company, maybe I would be buying an initial positions, and my thing is like. i would only be inclined to add more shares provided the company moves up in stock market what we say is mr market is supreme in term by mr market what i mean is the stock price obviously if the stock price is moving up something good is bound to happen right but in stock market the thing is it's not like the event would happen and the stock price would follow is the vice versa the stock price would follow it would move in anticipation of the event which can come at in due course right so obviously once you know i have bought my initial quantity once of average once i am amidst of a good quantity i won't be looking to exit until and unless the growth vanishes or until and unless some issue happens i would be staying put say after probably i have made my money that you know that thesis have gone right probably the stock price has more like 5 6 or 7x or whatever beat it's only after the stock price tanks 40% from its 50 to got from its all time high That I would be inclined to exit. That's what I follow. Because I'm ready to sacrifice my 40%, but not that regret thing, right? Okay, I bought something at 100, sold at 200, and it went to 20,000. It has happened with me, you know. In the year of 2010, now I I zeroed in on a company called Ajanta Pharma. The company was quoting at 200 rupees. On the first glance, it looked like a blinder. It looked like a stock which can help me to satiate my desires, you know, help me to satiate yeah. my cravings and retire early. So I thought like this is a stock which where I should put my 25% of my allocation 
in that stock 25 percent i mean i was such confident you know but again the pricing bias the company was quoting at 200 and i thought of like buying some bit at 180 it never came to 180 it moved to 250 and i was actually waiting for 200 the 250 stocks moved to 500 and i kept on waiting i was actually waiting for 400 and at that point of time i thought like jane de dusre kuch dekh lete the company quotes at 20000 now so the, 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 the stock ajanta pharma where i was supposed to put like 25 percent at 180 or 200 rupees Quote set up bloody to 20,000. That's a huge amount of money, right? Had I been part owner of Ajanta Pharma, this interview wouldn't have been happening, you know. <laughs> I would have been in some Vegas and all enjoying with him or some other partners. Well, that's true because uh, the idea is that in a good market, in a bull market or a strong market or even a sideways market, a good company will not fall by 30-40% right. without any reason. And market knows the reason first. So why not give price, uh, why not give benefit? to the market when it is falling. Right. We don't mind it buying again. Right. We can buy it again. Uh, but Absolutely. you need to question your thesis when the price is telling you maybe something is wrong. That is why you give advantage. Because see, you, everyone is scared of a bubble, but everyone wants a bubble. Mm -hmm. right. Because right. money is made in a bubble. Exactly. So what happens is that you are buying because you want the stock to be in a bubble, but before the stock becomes reaches the bubble territory right. you sell because if you are buying a stock how how does a multi bagger get created how does it give you money so a stock probably at a PE of say 5 would go to 30 but a person with the growth and everything constant but the person who has bought it and seen it there will not be able to hold it so you have to have some data point to keep holding it right. it's very difficult to hold it no matter growth is there whatever is there you will feel that it is not possible. This this stock cannot quote so high. Market will re-rate it. Market will know more. But if you give price the benefit, you will be able to ride the entire journey. Correct. It's very difficult to find a good stock. So it is better that once you find it, ride the journey, wait for price to tell you that, okay, exit. And these kind of companies, the companies that we are talking about, rarely fall by that much. Right. In a good market, probably during a crash, everything falls. And then, you know, you know that it's not company specific. It's uh, global markets or anything else. It's not company. When market is okay, company is falling, you need to question your thesis. And just for our viewers, you know, why this 40%, right? I mean, someone can ask a question, why this 40% or 20 or 25%? Because the thing is like, once something tanks from say 100 to 60 or less than that, then the thing is, maybe the company is falling 40%, but to recover or to cancel that loss, you need to gain 66%, right? From 60 to 100 is 66.6%, but from 100 to 60 is just 40%. It's very, very tough to recoup its old highs once your company collapses by 40%. Because when the company is moving high from 60 to 70, it's moving in an uncharted territory, right? Nobody has traded in that level. So there, there weren't any weaker hands. But now, since the company has started collapsing from 100, so obviously there will be some say, you know, swallow hands which are looking to exit once their break even comes. That is why, uh, you know, the, the 100 to 60 things comes to 20. Because obviously people would be stuck and they would be, you know, forced or inclined to sell their stock in panic, right? That's yeah. how the stock market reacts. So that is, that's how the stock market works. Exactly. It's common sense which creates supports and resistances which we will be charts in this. So it's not like 40% which we started, you know, I have had that series of regrets, but thanks to this Ajanta Pharma crisis, I mean, you know, I have evolved with that strategy and so far it has helped like wonderful. Very good. And what he was saying, Soma was saying was it makes sense that write the trend and you know, the trend exactly. is your friend till at the end it bends. Right. So you just, just write, write the trend. But the problem with Indian investor is they would always, you know, sell a, sell a winner to fund a loser. And the loser would tank again. Exactly. And uh, this is not the only way to make money. We are talking about a lot of things that we do. Right. So, uh, you were talking about the beginnings and all. When I came into the market, my first thing was that, okay, I've done a lot of bookish, bookish things. Now I want to meet the real investors who have made money in the market, meet them, listen to them, learn from them. So, I traveled all across. Uh, whoever, whichever name came and I thought that this person is a respectable investor or a very good investor, let me go and meet them, approach them, meet them. And one thing that I learned, which is the most important thing is there's no one way right. in the market. Exactly. There's no one way. So I met around 10, 15 investors, traveled across the country. Everyone was so different. So I met one doctor. So his uh, strength, he's a brilliant investor. His strength was that doctors have this knack or this ability 
to uh, pick up the disease without knowing everything about you or your entire history of uh, medical history. So he used to have little bit of data points and come to a conclusion. Another investor say I met uh, Arun also, Arun Bhai also during that time and he was more on the pattern side. So everyone was different. So don't focus and think that okay this is the only way to make money. Whatever helps you sleep at night, whatever helps you make money is the right way. Just know what is it that helps you make money. Knowing is more important. Clarity is more important. Like knowing it again. I will exit when there is a 40% loss. Not when uh, you know somebody comes up on TV and tells me to exit or something like that. Exactly. That is how we got connected, you know, thanks to his, these traits of him, we got connected. Uh, exactly, that's that's the same thing and I also get asked so many questions that, okay, now the training is over, what should I do and give me that uh, uh, that uh, secret sauce, you know, the secret sauce. Well, there's, there's no secret sauce, what works for you may not open. It has happened with me so many times, the same technique. Now, I'm, I'm a guy completely focused on price. Right. Um, Techie guy, okay. So I'm showing, I'm explaining the same concept, technique to two two people sitting one on my left, one on my right. The guy on the right makes a lot of money with the same technique. Mm. The guy on the left just couldn't make a buck out of it. In fact, he loses. Mm. The technique is the same. The recipe right. is the same. It worked for him exceptionally. He right. could adopt to it. But on the other hand, he he could not. There was another technique which worked for him. Exactly. So what I do, what what I generally tell is, take a mirror, look at, okay. ask yourself, what do you want from the market? Mm. It's not money. If you, if the answer is money, then you are doing something wrong. Absolutely. Okay. It, it can't be money. The money is just a tool which will help you to go somewhere. Arun wants to go to Vegas now that I know that. Okay. So, <laughs> so it's definitely not money. So it has to be something else. So knowing the self is obviously a very very important point. Uh, which I'll just extend to my second last question. Um, I happen to meet a lot of youngsters thanks mm. to my training in various colleges etc in, in India I happen to meet a lot of youngsters and if I'm not mistaken you also go to colleges in Zambia recently I think you went in Bombay mm. and got a talk right mm. so uh, they have a curious eyes mm. okay they only see the surface of it mm. that is the jazz part of it the screen and the money and the suits and the the, the nightlife and the cars right mm. uh, it's good mm. it, it might motivate mm. it might inspire you mm. but there's a different level altogether, different league of hard work and perseverance and swear, a mm. lot of things that actually goes on. Mm. Um, so what will you suggest to the youngsters? I, I know for your workshops, mm. correct me if I'm not, I've not attended any of your workshops now, but I would love to come to Singapore and talk with them. But the point is, if uh, uh, in most of your workshops, the average age would be most of them would be working professionals who might have a bit of experience in right. investment, right? Mm -hmm. You will rarely find the odd 19 year old or 18 year old, 21 year old, but the Pune may Arun Bhatt the future Arun. You will probably not. Very rarely you will. But what I'm asking is if there's a workshop which is full of 19 year old guys, mm -hmm. 21 year old guys who are just going to finish their college or MBA, curious eyes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they want to make it big in the right. financial markets as a professional having a career or as a trader investor what are a couple of things that you will tell them to so do and not do first thing is they are fortunate to be born in like india where the country is growing we probably would be would have the highest growth in the coming decade or so and you guys are like so so fortunate to be in your teens 1920s at this age you can afford to do blunders but once you enter the post arena of 30 and 35, you can't afford to do blunders because you would be binded with responsibilities, right? And since if you are starting fresh, obviously it takes time. Rome wasn't built in a day, right? And you shouldn't be the cartoon character Johnny Bravo, you know, where the foundation wasn't being laid. He would have this much of chest with tiny th thin legs, right? So if the foundation takes time, you know, just he gave a perspective of this Chinese bamboo tree, you know. I mean, the Chinese bamboo tree, I mean, it does, you, you pour this heat and it remains under the mud for five years. In the sixth year, it moves up like 90 feet. So we are actually talking about the real foundation, right? So take time, you know, it's not like you need a lot of money. I mean, I started with 1000 bucks in the year of 15 and I was covered by business today in, at the age of 22 for making a lot of money. So obviously, at some point of a time, you need to make a start, right? So why not now? You have got the age, you have the sight, you have the right education, you know, 
So just go open an account. It it comes pretty easy and cheap, and start to buy shares. The last time I bought, I've had sixty nine of you again. You know, United Spirits also. United Spirits and had sixty nine. You know, cost same. Both are around two thousand bucks. <laughs> so the next time you you tend to go for a liquor bottle, also buy a few shares of. This you know United Spirits. Your contribution can actually propel United Spirits in the next league because it's been managed by the King Diageo. So who knows? United Spirits itself that that two thousand rupees itself can catapult that money to the twenty thousand leagues in the next eight ten years. So make a start. Put some of your you know start putting some of your savings every month. And at one point of time you would be amazed you know with the amount of money that probably you would have made. So for me, there will be two, three things I'll tell them realistically. First thing would be that you know uh, they are they have done a lot of work to be there in the workshop because at least they know that it is important. Right. So that right. is yes. something where a lot of things are covered. Yes. Second thing is do not go by okay. Let me trade or let me do intraday or something and make money and then I will invest. There is no that future. You start that. market is about temperament you decide what you want to be if you want to be a trader traders make money be a trader follow that approach you want to be an investor follow that approach don't try and mix things or even if you want to go for the mix thing remember that you want to go for the mix thing yeah, so right. know what you want why are you here that is very very important the third most important thing is that uh, prepare to give something to the market you have spent millions of rupees trying to get formal education <laughs> which would probably i don't know uh, I, uh, in a practical world what would that help you except for broadening your horizons right. now just be little bit prepared to give something to the market the problem is when you come to the market you want to become a millionaire next day mm-hmm. or you want to double your money next day don't try that try and lose some money not like intentionally but if it goes think of it as a tuition fee that you are paying right and just understand how important it is to start at this age with whatever you want to do because uh, you know it's a basic compounding table and it works it works it genuinely works so you get that extra 2 3 years to make mistakes to learn uh, when you are young people like uh, aruna people who are good investors people like you would definitely meet these people at 30 you probably think that okay how will it feel when i go and ask them okay meet me and teach me so go shout uh, reach them try and know what they are doing uh, just just try and see what the secret mantra is and you will know that there is no secret mantra so that's actually a very good point because when i take these trainings uh, in my experience of last 12 years i taking these classes and at the age of 19 18 someone is willing to learn about how to invest and trade and definitely yes so the youngsters actually at the age of 18 19 so i personally could connect you know just to interrupt you like my age limit goes from 7 to 8 to 6 you know in my last birthday and i got a call from a guy <coughs> who had a pretty childish voice and he called himself some naresh also and he was age 7 7 and he was interested in markets i mean he was a blog reader i mean i got the shock of my life i mean seriously guy are you really seven then you know he conveyed the call to his dad and his dad clarified that yeah actually his age is seven think about it obviously he was like a gujarati fellow so a gujarati fellow of like seven interested in markets so who am i who is he who is you like <laughs> these guys are the next buffets and they may themselves be the next benchmarks you know and it's very good that they are born in a country like india absolutely we are we are we are going good and we are going fast perfect and another thing which would be itching us is like see in every mahalla or gallies or the guy next door they would be one of the models or singers or cricketers or footballers and what why not stock markets exactly i mean obviously i mean see in today's time every day the total volume of the market would be the north of 7 8 lakh crores and everything is aligned to equity right you are a shirt you are using this things the richest indian or the richest global guy in the world obviously all of their fortunes are tied to stock markets right and these guys would be giving that a skip common sense is that same i don't think so so people come in markets enjoy markets mark this is something which would go on and on and on and you would make a lot of money that to tax free and just like yourself who knows maybe you can partner myself in the bigger street <laughs> So this brings us to the last question. Mm-hmm. Something which is very close to my heart, mm-hmm. and I've been asking this question to very many people. Uh, when I used to live in Bombay and I'm in Cal, 
Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Mm. And when you listen to my question, I will request you to keep your eyes closed. Mm. Um, and whatever comes to your mind first, mm. just say it. Mm. What I'm essentially asking you to do is not think. Okay. Then later I'll give you a chance to think. Mm. Okay. okay. So I'll request you to close your eyes. And uh, the question is, if you have to represent the market in form of a animal, what animal will it be? If the market is equal to some animal, mm -hmm. which animal? Tiger. So, man. For me, it will be horse. Horse and tiger. Thank you guys for joining me today. And it was a pleasure. I'm sure our viewers will also uh, learn a lot. You take the always definitely one should keep in mind. Common sense. Look around, keep your eyes and ears open. What are you consuming? What are the things you love the most? Obviously, there's a company who's making it. Be a part or not of it. Arun, Soumya, thank you again. Thanks for And all the best for your workshop in Singapore. Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, hi. It was an honor to be here. And uh, I was told just to you know, leave a message to you guys. See, there is absolutely no tips, nothing. Go and enjoy your life. Open a demat account the next day. You know, try to invest. Don't be a trader. Don't listen to others. Don't read books. Be practical. Make friends. Get connected, and be passionate. If you are not passionate, success is not going to come right. Don't be singers, models, wannabes, cricketers. Your life would expire at 35 or 40. Who knows? But in market, there is no expiry. Maybe your dad would be against your wishes. And look at me. Like I was told that a single beer market would wash me away. Here I stand, I'm like 28 now and I've make a lot of, I've made a lot of money and probably would be making much more, right? No tips, nothing, just be passionate, start trading, make an, make an habit, start putting some say 1000, 2000 bucks from your disposal income, put that in your demand accounts and after a matter of 10, 12 months or 10, 12 years, you would have a pot of money to enjoy. That's it from me. So uh, thanks for hearing us. Uh, one message which I want to give to all of you is now all of you would be wondering where to start. Uh, first thing you can do is try and find a company which you can resonate to probably it could be Inox or a PVR where you go and watch movie every day try and see their corporate presentation try and see their annual report what they do because we understand it very well right we pay 200 300 rupees for a popcorn and a coke so try and understand where they get money from what do they do how, how much are the tickets contributing uh, do flop movies make them earn less uh, do good hit movies or probably Salman or Shah Rukh make them earn more start there and uh, start thinking of it as a business so the idea is to start thinking of a company as a business which we fail to do so once you are in that process I think uh, you'll be good to go uh, doctors start with say a pharma company or something like that and uh, just understand the business uh, try and feel the ownership as Arun said and be patient don't compare your returns to others and uh, you'll be fine you'll do very well thank you